Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Anbenic RG28XX, a new pint-sized retro gaming powerhouse that offers quite a lot of appeal in a sleek pocketable form factor for roughly 50 bucks. But is it worth buying? What are some of the top hands on reviewers saying about the device? And what do I think about it? Stick around to find out. Before we get going though, please note that this is not a hands-on review, but rather a summary of some of the top reviewers' findings combined with my research and opinion. In other words, you get an overview of the main concerns and highlights from multiple reviewers in one concise video. I hope you find some value in it, as I genuinely enjoy making these. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out. With that said, let's take a look at the specs. Under the RG28XX's tiny shell lies a familiar pair of processing muscles. An H700 quad-core CPU running at 1.5GHz, paired with a Mali G31 MP2 GPU with 1GB of DDR4 RAM. Translation, this tiny little treat can handle all your retro gaming cravings up to N64 and Dreamcast, just like its bigger brother, the RG35XXH. While the 2.4-inch 480p IPS display may seem small, most reviewers noted that the crisp resolution works wonders for pixel-perfect oldies like Game Boy Classics. And with a 3300mAh battery pumping out between 6 to 8 hours playtime, you can indulge in those nostalgic adventures for hours on end. This is really one of its major plus points as most other retro handhelds only manage around 5 to 6 hours. There is no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity though. You may be able to connect a dongle to get the unit online, but none of the reviewers tried this and I'm not sure the firmware supports it. It should be possible, but don't back on it as I haven't seen it confirmed yet. Speaking of firmware, the software the unit comes with is Anbenic's updated firmware that is quite capable from the feedback I've seen. But you have to be aware that there is no custom firmware yet. This should change in the near future, as the chipset is the same as many of Anbenic's other units that already has custom firmware available. But of course, the main factor that sets this unit apart is its design and ergonomics. The RG28XX is an undeniably compact unit that comes in a range of interesting color options. That's part of its appeal. Its tiny stature makes it a dream for those plagued with puny pockets. Unlike some bulkier handhelds, this little guy can actually stay in your pocket comfortably. It does have two quite notable issues that most reviewers found displeasing. We will cover them in a bit though. Despite these, the ergonomics have a lot of plus points. According to hands-on reviewers, the D-pad in particular gets a big thumbs up for its precision and anti-slip grooves that makes it a stellar choice for everything from fighting games to platformers. It does not produce any false diagonals, so you get a very accurate reaction to your inputs. Unfortunately, based on the feedback I've seen, the face buttons are a bit small for the liking of some who have tried it. Most reviewers are also not happy with the inset shoulder buttons that make playing with them uncomfortable. Extended play sessions with these are not recommended. They are also reportedly quite clicky and loose, causing them to rattle when you shake the unit. The other concern that was raised was the lack of analog sticks. These are not really a problem with older 16-bit games, but will make playing the likes of N64 and Dreamcast a challenge for some, as you will have to set up the D-pad to act like an analog stick in certain games. And you will also not have the C button available that the N64 controller had. Despite this, at least one of the reviewers did not have any problem using the D-pad to navigate around in the likes of Mario 64, F-Zero X, or Skies of Arcadia. So there are quite a few titles that will just play well off the get-go. That brings us to performance. The RG28XX may not be able to play the latest and greatest, but it performs brilliantly with everything up to PS1. As mentioned, even N64 and Dreamcast titles, while requiring the occasional graphical tweak, are still very much on the menu here. Reviewers also found it pleasing to be able to play these despite the small screen. Just remember, you'll have to remap the controls for those games requiring analog sticks. As for PSP games, a light appetizer is doable, but trying to cram in those hardware hungry titles is not an option. The 16 by 9 aspect ratio is also very small on the 2.8 inch screen, so I don't know if you would want to do that anyway. You will be able to play the likes of Virtua Tennis if you can see the ball. But the more 3D intensive the game gets, the more this little unit will struggle. Race fans may for example be able to play Dirt Rally 2 with frame skip on, but it will not be a premium experience with the game feeling very jittery according to feedback. To finalize then, what do I think of the unit? I think it would be a good option if you could not get the 35XX at around the same price on sale sometimes. 
As mentioned, the 28XX essentially has the same chip and memory as the 35XXH. The H is $20 more when buying from Ambernick directly. However, I could find the H on AliExpress for as low as $52. Not sure how long this will last as only certain shops have it at this price and with it being from AliExpress there may be longer shipping times involved. I will leave a link in the description below if you're interested. The H has dual analog sticks and a bigger screen while still being very pocketable. It also has built in Wi Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, so personally, I would rather save a little more and opt for the H, especially if you can get it at a good price that is close to $50. If you really don't like chunky things in your pocket and don't really need analog sticks for the games you play, the 28XX might be for you. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you want to pick one up, I will leave a link in the description below. Please consider using it as it really helps the channel out. If you want to know more about the 35XXH, you can check out my overview by clicking on the link on screen now. That's it for this video though. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.